should the audience expect from Hal Rudnick versus Sam Levine? You know, Sam has two M's in it, and some people are saying the second M stands for movies. But today, I'm here to prove that that second M stands for... My bad. I know Hal, funny guy, sharp guy. I'm sure he knows his movies. I know he knows his movies, according to you guys. I think there's been very little smack talk between uh, me and Hal because A, we're both gentlemen, and uh, B, we're gonna let our trivia skills do the talking. I am the heavy favorite going into this match because I retweeted the poll earlier. So it really has no bearing. No, uh, no one should be intimidated by me. I'm not a tall man. Uh, my bark is far worse than my bite. And uh, it's just movie trivia. Don't worry about it. It's who came hungry. I did not. I have not eaten in a week, baby. I'm very hungry. So hungry that my blood sugar is at a dangerously low level. Look, I don't want to say I'm going to be a guy who's not competing in that title picture. But we'll see. Look into my eyes, Sam Levine. Hear me now. Understand me later. I've got a great deal of respect for you and your body of work, big fan, and it's a pleasure to face you today. Hal, uh, I think you're a great guy, you're a funny guy, um, but I'm sorry, it is my destiny you're going down. Welcome back to yet another episode of the Movie Trivia Schmodown, and my goodness, Mark, what a matchup today. That's Christian Harloff, I am Mark Ellis, and I haven't been as excited for a matchup since I was last week at this same time, Christian, because we have Hal Rudnick from Screen Junkies, right. the icon, stepping out of that spotlight and into the unknown that is his opponent, Sam Levine. The inglorious one himself. This is going to be a very interesting match. I don't know what's going to happen. Hal Rudnick is the clear favorite, as said by the fans. They have been tweeting out. They have been talking about this. Both of these guys are very competitive. They both have a really good movie knowledge. They're both funny. The question is, who is going to be the contender on the road to the title? Two quick guns, both fast on the draw. Who's going to be the best one here today? Well, we're about to find out. For my money, I am good friends with Hal Rudnick. Right. I think he is a doll baby, both on screen and in real life. Right. I think he's going to get waxed today. Waxed? Because on our wow. show, Schmozdo Movies, you can see the, the ability that Sam Levine has when he's guessing movie quotes. Now, will that translate into all these categories we have before these gentlemen? Look, Sam Levine is the underdog, but I will tell you what. I think Sam Levine is going to be the Mike Tyson of the movie trivia. In what year, uh, Mike Tyson? Uh, 86. Oh, good. That was I a good year. I think that he is, look, I've seen this guy. His knowledge, he's modest, and he does the, oh, please, please. But he knows. He's a hungry animal, this guy. I think it's going to be something to see. But who knows? Rudnick, very competitive. You saw what happened. He competed in the... The trivia contest, the team tournament, was getting all the stuff right, but it was his, his teammate that really let him down. Okay, Christian, let's go to the tail of the tape here. What are we looking at? Now, you look here, like, obviously, Hal Rudnick, known for his humor, known for the quick wit, and we know that he's representing Screen Junkies, as where Sam Levine, known mostly for his acting career and for his many appearances on the Doug Benson podcast and for working with Kevin Pollack. There's a lot to be known about these guys, but in the Schmodown, we just don't know. We are ready for the official introduction of our matchup today. I turn it over to the golden throat of Christian George Harlow. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for the Schmodown movie trivia. First, in the underdog table, you know him from Freaks and Geeks, you know him from Kevin Pollack's podcast, the Doug Benson podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, making his debut in the Schmodown, the inglorious one, Sam Lavine. His opponent, you know him from the faction Screen Junkies. You know him from the show Screen Junkies. <laughs> Making his debut in the singles Schmodown tournament. He is looking for the title. He is looking for Sam Levine's respect. It is the icon, Hal Rodnick. Wow. 
I don't know if I'm more impressed with their trivia knowledge or just the fact you can belt those intros out week after week after week. I've been practicing my shower. Ladies and gentlemen, the competitors have already been prepped on the rules of the round. And for everybody watching at home or while you're driving to work, I'm going to give you a quick run through. Round one, there's going to be six questions for each competitor. Each question is worth one point. There is no stealing. There is no penalty for missing an answer. Christian, are you ready? I am ready to go. Hal Rudnick, are you ready? I am, sir. Sam Levine, are you ready? I am. I'd like to shake the hand of my competitor before battle gets underway. I love this. I like that. I it's love that. Look at that. Gesture. I like Good that. Good luck, you know, Lots of respect. Eighty percent chance it was going to be one of those buzzers. Wasn't the case. Was not the case. Very nice. All right, let's get started here. Okay, now Hal, you are the favorite, so you can choose. Would you like to answer questions right away, or would you like Sam to have to go first? I will go first. Oh, he's kicking right. off, Christian. I like that attitude. I will be asking you questions for round one. Hal, in the realm of comedies, <clears throat> your first question is: Rob Schneider and Rachel McAdams star in which film? Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. That is incorrect. We were looking for the hot chick. Barely a comedy, but under the category of comedies, none the less. Moving on to drama. Dennis Quaid stars as Detective Remy McQuaid in this 1987 drama. Dennis Quaid stars as Detective Remy McQuaid. Five, four, Three, no way two. out. We were looking for him banging Ellen Barkin in the Big Easy. Oh, Christian, he's 0 oh, yeah. for, oh, for 2. I really wish I'd had this. Room. Hopefully oh, he can redeem himself. Sam Levine already Low overconfident. Right. Comic book movies. Want to run a strong suit? Yep. Who played Lex Luthor's bumbling sidekick in 1978's Superman the Movie? Ned Beatty. Give Good that point. man a wow. point. Well done, Hal Rudnick. One out of three. Sam Levine, you are up. All right. The Inglorious oh. One has his shot at comedy. <laughs> Sam. Yeah. In which comedy classic will you find the character, the Waco Kid? Uh, the Waco Kid. Which comedy classic the Waco Kid? Uh, five, four. Three. The Grifters? The answer is Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles. Blazing Grifters, Saddles. good movie, though. Yeah. Solid Blazing movie. Saddles. In the category of drama, who plays the new editor of the paper Marty Baron in Oscar winner Spotlight? The new editor is Liev Schreiber. That is correct. Oh, Point recent. for Sam Levine. In the category of comic book movies, okay. Alan Cumming played which mutant in Nick X2? Crawler. The answer is nice. He barely got it. He barely, he barely noted the treble in that Christian, but he still got it right. Very understated. Sorry. And he is now very beating Hal Rudnick. I'm very upset with myself for not knowing Blazing Saddles. Two to, to one. one. I knew that one, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, two to one. Very Hal, sad. it is no longer Taking Blazing myself. Saddles, but we are going to throw you into the realm of sci-fi fantasy. In the realm of sci-fi and fantasy, if you will. <laughs> I Seems knew you'd get excited. He's, I didn't know it would be like that. Here we go. What is the name of the man in the bunny suit in Donnie Darko? Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> that is the actor's name. The <laughs> character's name. Five, four. That's actually an incorrect answer. We were so looking we, that's, for that's, Frank. Yeah, we're looking for Frank. <laughs> just, just Frank, yeah. the guy who wears a bunny suit. Yeah. And we move on to movie quotes, Mr. Rudnick. Name the movie from the quote. Name the quote from the movie. It seems to be the only thing you've learned is that Caesar is a salad dressing dude. Seems Five, to me the only thing you've learned is that Caesar four, is a salad dressing dude. Bill and Ted's dude. Excellent Adventure. Give that man a point. All Excellent. Right. Last category in round one for Hal is Action Adventure. What famous adventure film was the hero seeking the Shankara Stones in? Could you repeat the question, please? I certainly can. What famous adventure film was the hero seeking the Shankara Stones in? Guardians of the Galaxy. We were looking for 1984's classic Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, the three magical potatoes that would have healed the village and brought the kids All right. back. All right. The score right now, Mark, two to two, going into the last set of questions for Sam Levine. Sam, Ooh. The sci in the category of science fiction, yes. the science fiction thriller Species starred who 
as a beautiful woman who transforms into a killing machine. Uh, Natasha Henstrich. That is correct. Oh, very formative moment in my life seeing that movie on the big screen. It seems like the same thing for Sam yeah, Levine. The poster yeah. in our office. Certainly do. Yeah, try having her play your mother-in-law on a TV show. <laughs> oh, see, look at that. Unbelievable. <laughs> movie quotes. Movie quotes. Name the movie from the quote. I was born a poor black child. The jerk. Sam Levine starting to tear away. That was correct. This is what he does, Christian. Action adventure. Yes, sir. In what city was the setting for Predator 2? Uh, Predator 2 took place in Los Angeles. That is correct. <laughs> Sam Levine hitting all three points. In and the you got half. excited like Gary Busey did in Predator, Predator 2. 2. That was an amazing transformation by you and Christian after round one. Sam Levine going on a tear there at the end. It is now five to two. Levine comfortably in control going in to the second round. All right, Mark, <clears throat> why don't you explain the rules of round two to the fans? Sounds like a difficult task, but I'm up to it. So gentlemen, in round two and everybody watching at home, each competitor will have four questions from a category that they will get from spinning a magic wheel they do have a mulligan if they do not like the topic they spin first they can spin again but whatever that lands on they have to answer four questions each question is worth two points however a competitor can go down to one point value if they request multiple choice christian there is stealing available right. in round two so if somebody gets it wrong the other person can get the answer right so that means for us we can't board out the answer until both competitors have gotten it right or wrong. Correct. Now, Sam, you are in the lead. You can choose whether or not you would like to spin first or have your opponent spin first. Uh, I suppose I would like to spin first. All then. right. Josh McCuga, bring out the wheel and let the inglorious one spin. There's oh, Josh. He's back oh, this unbelievable. Week. Look at Josh look McCuga. It, look at look that. that. Very nice to have him back. Let's wow. bring him right behind. Let's, let's get it right oh, in right between behind. the two of them. There right there. There you go. go. Thank you, Josh. You'd, you'd figure just, he would have learned just this. Just like now, last week, Josh. Thank you for showing up sober. That is, that is close right. enough to the middle. Let's Thank get you. All right, Sam. So you are up first, my friends. Give it a nice heart spin, please. All right. Pretty good spin. And it lands on fantasy sci fi. Would you like to keep that or would you like to spin again? I'm going to try my luck spinning again. All right. Going again, Christian. That's, right. that's how you spin that's a, a spin. wheel. That's a spin. What do you get? Horror. Horror. Okay. Horror okay. for Sam. He looks happy with it. Okay. Still okay. Though. All right. All right. So let's let's start. Remember, Hal, you can steal in this round. So just be aware. I'll take it. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Okay, Sam. Yep. Which film is set in the town of Woodsboro, California? Uh, Scream. Two points. Two points yeah. right off the bat. This is getting to be a beat down. <clears throat> Name the killer in the original Friday the 13th. Mrs. Voorhees. We will we'll accept, accept Mrs. We'll accept Voorhees. That. We'll accept that. Jason's mom. mom. He put on the hockey mask and got out of the thing after the first Friday the 13th. Sam, in which film does Bruce Campbell play Elvis Presley fighting a mummy in a retirement home? An excellent film that more people need to see called Bubba Hotep. Wow. He's running away with this so far, Christian. Is how Rudnick's sweaty yet? We'll find out after this question. What is the spiritual realm called in the Insidious films? Ooh. The uh, other side. Oh, you didn't go for multiple choice. So, Hal, you can, oh you can steal this and get two points if you can get it right. What is the spiritual realm called in the Insidious films? Can I ask for multiple choice? No, you can't. You cannot because Sam did it. That was a strategy by Sam. Spiritual realm. You cried after every Insidious film you saw. Is that true? I've never seen an Insidious. Five, four, three. The Dark. I like both guesses, Christian. Unfortunately, neither one is correct. We were looking for The Further. The ah, further. The we were both in the further. ballpark. Did we write that movie and not remember it? Right. Uh, I feel right. like that's what happened. So look at this. It is 11 to 2 right now. 11 to 2. How? You Woo. need a big round. Christian's going to be asking you the questions. Do you think he can do it? Uh, I can. Let me. I want to explain, though, something to you as well, too, Hal. you got to have a big round here because you have to score some points here. It is 11 to 2. If Sam steals and he gets a 10-point lead on you, you will be knocked out. Just be aware. Spin that wheel, my friend. Give it a good spin. Good spin. That's a pretty good That's spin. Good. Decent, That's a pretty good decent. spin. All right, it lands on sports, sports movies. I'll take it. He's going to take the sports He's movies. He's taking sports movies. Risky move. Sam Levine is a very big sports fan as well, too. Here we go. I did not know that about yes, Sam. He is a big Chicago Cubs fan. Oh, well, why would you root for that team? 
Oh. How dare you? <laughs> Here, so, sorry, it's the first time a Cub won anything in like 100 years. So. Well, he didn't win yet. You might have just jinxed him. It might be Steve Bartman. All right, here we go. I'm let's, the GOAT. Yeah, let's, now I'm the GOAT. Let's go. <laughs> Am I, I'm not asking. You're up, buddy. Oh, no, sorry. Here. All right, Hal. In the yeah. category of sports movies, <laughs> the 2002 film Blue Crush features which sport? Surfing. Two points for Hal Rudnick. Kate Bosworth in that film. Yep. This is a fun fact. You will find characters named Sidney Dean and Billy Hoyle in which basketball film? Semi pro. Incorrect. <laughs> Sam to steal for two points. Uh, blue chips? The answer is white men can't jump. Ah. But blue chips is great. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. What baseball movie is based on the novel Shoeless Joe? Field of Dreams. Correct. Rudnick's coming back, Christian. That looks good. Four points there for Rudnick. Which baseball player was a hypnotized assassin in The Naked Gun? Reggie Jackson. Another two Save points for Rudnick. Gun. Saves himself. Woo. We're going around three. It Mark. is 11 to 8. Sam Levine had a huge lead, and it has been cut to three by Hal Rudnick's crafty appearance in sports movies in I'll the second round. Cut you down to size, Ellis. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He's just, he's I, just a judge. Just said, yeah. He's just a judge. The question's already been written. Yeah. Sorry, oh. I got worked up. That's all right. Okay. Man, okay. I have a lot of pent up frustration going into this round. Very still getting over that first round. Man. <laughs> yeah, Josh. McCool. Ellis, I love you. I did not mean it. It's okay. It's, you're only going to be docked two points for that. All right, answer. Mark, <laughs> let, let's go ahead and tell the fans what round three is all about. Round I just, three can is I just say one coming. thing first? You, you certainly can. The Hit me up <laughs> at Hal Rudnick. I don't know how this is going to go. Right now, I feel like I just got in good graces. You can cut this part out of the A show. A wily strategy, Christian. <laughs> go ahead and plug in Twitter now because you yeah. might not My be Twitter's around. My Twitter at Hal right? Rudnick. It I might may be die No, listen, I, 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 I got to be honest with you. I thought Hal was going to get knocked out. And he didn't. He came back. Nice looking second round. I'll knock you out. <laughs> <laughs> that outburst was warranted. That's not a nice thing to say. I'm this is why saying, we can't I'm have nice things. All right, let's go to round three, please. Yes. Round three, there's going to be three questions for each competitor, but the point values get effing crazy, ladies and gentlemen. Our competitors are going to pick three numbers that is going to be assigned to three random categories. The first category is worth one point. The second one is worth three points. The final category is worth five points points christian so there's a total of nine points that could possibly be won in round three there's no stealing you either know it or you don't no multiple choice either sam you again are in the lead here okay. going into this round you can choose to pick first You're, you can pick the numbers first or you can have hal pick it's up to you there's a little bit of a strategy here it's up to uh you. yeah i guess there is uh, the numbers are between you have, you have how many categories 24 have... categories 24. uh okay i'll choose first okay pick three numbers from one to 24. uh 3, 12, 21. 3, 12, 3. He took mine. He took the ones I was. 12 and 21. Those, those are off the table. You should have thought about that three. when you did not know the answers in the first yes. round. 3, 12, <laughs> and 21 for Sam. Mr. Rudnick, you are up. Oh, you can take wait, what? three oh. numbers. You cannot take 3, 12, or 21. Don't say 3. 12. How? Oh. How? Rudnick! It's like a deal or no deal. Um... <laughs> We don't have the budget for briefcases, unfortunately. <laughs> 1 9 24. I like those numbers, Christian. 1 9. Solid choice. The categories they correlate to are very hard, but I like those numbers. But what? All right. So, <laughs> Ellis. Sam. I wouldn't have picked those. All right. Ellis! Sam is up first. Sam is going first. All right. And that's me, right? That is going to be you. All right, Sam. Yes, sir. For the one pointer, your category. It's classics. Okay. Classics. Classics. Wait, oh. a, a little classic music? Da no. da 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 da. We don't da, have da, the da, rights. Da, da, da. Oh, we don't have the right. rights. What no. is the name of Jimmy Stewart's guardian angel in It's a Wonderful Life? Uh, Clarence. One point for Sam Levine. Didn't break a sweat there. Did not break a sweat there. All right. So All right Sam is up again. Out. Sam is up again with your second category for three points Julia Roberts movies. Okay. Julia Roberts movies. Okay? Okay. What 1991 movie saw Julia escaping her past and her abusive husband? Uh, sleeping with the Enemy. Three points for Three Sam Levine. Three points. Based on the true story of you? Is that? No, that's No, not that's correct. somebody no. else. My bad. Hal Rudnick now is up with the one-pointer. 
Hal Rudnick, your one point category is going to be a category I think you'll be a fan of 80s movies. All right. The question for 80s movies is In what 80s flick will you find supporting characters named Boof and Styles? Teen Wolf. Give the man a point, Christian. I'll take it. Very well done, Mr. Rodnick. Your second category is going to be biopics. These are picks. Question. About yes. a bio. If, uh, w w does that also in the scope of that include um, the Pauly Shore, Stephen Baldwin hit Biodome? Is that based on a true story? No, but there's a bio in the title. Oh. I think that we can include Biodome could be a contender Count in it. this category. Three points. That is not your three point question, however. My bad. Here is your question. <laughs> In the film Biodome, I'm sorry, that's the wrong question. Ooh, you sweet. Who played Ty Cobb in the 1994 baseball biopic Cobb? Well, let me check every outhouse, henhouse, and doghouse <laughs> of my brain to say Tommy Lee Jones. Wow, three points for help. Can we give him four for that answer? Yeah, that was good. All right, it is 15 to 12. Going into the five pointer here. This Hal is, is huge. Hal's right. making a big effort to cling. Hal's going to go first with the five points here. Oh, is he really? Okay. Oh. Hal Rudnick, you are up, and your category is, fittingly enough, Christian, war films. If Hal misses this, he loses. If he hits it, Sam has to hit his five to win. This is why we love this show. And this is why we play the game. Here we go. Hal Rudnick, your question, sir. <laughs> What film starring Matthew McConaughey and Bill Paxton as members of a U.S. Navy team who commandeer a German submarine during World War II? Matthew McConaughey, Bill Paxton, members of a U.S. Navy no, team commandeering if, a German if sub. If he hits it, Sam Levine has to answer. If he misses, it's over. Widowmaker. And the winner! Oh, the inglorious one! one Sam Levine! What a matchup! U571 sinks Hal Rudnick. You know, Unbelievable. Christian, in the film U571, Bon Jovi's head actually blows up at one point during the movie. You got to feel like that's what Rudnick is going through right now. Oh. He clung on for dear life. He took, the ch he took somebody who could be a champ one day to the limit. I mean, unbelievable match. Like I said, Hal really put up a fight, went down swinging, but Sam Levine is going to be a contender in this league. You know, Christian, the answer was U571. That's what Hal was looking for. Got and sunk. in that movie, Bon Jovi's head explodes at one part. Oh. Spoiler alert, you got to think that's what Hal's going through right now. And we're going to find out from our winner and our loser, Josh McCuga has their last words. What's up, Collider fans? I'm Josh McCuga here with Sam Levine, contestant on tonight's Schmodown, uh, the victor if you will. It was a hell of a match, Sam. How'd you feel? Uh, it was great. Uh, Hal was an absolutely outstanding competitor, and he made me raise my game, and at no point was I safe. Now, a lot of uh, uh, the Twitter kind of exploded earlier. They were giving Hal a 63% chance of beating you. I mean, that's, that's big numbers. Uh, you were the underdog coming in, but a lot of us insiders thought you were going to mow people down like an ugly lawnmower. Going in, did you have that confidence? I did not have that confidence because I really didn't know what you guys were going to throw at me. I mean, everyone, even the biggest movie buff, has you know gaps uh, in their knowledge. And, uh, and I think a lot of these questions are just the luck of the draw. I mean, there were some... Uh, I knew that, that Hal got to answer. There were some I didn't know that Hal answered correctly. So I, I think a lot of luck came in part. Now, your first question was about the Waco kid in Blazing Saddles. Yes, I think the entire room uh, silently gasped that you didn't get that correct. Did you right. feel a sense of, of pressure there? I did. The gasp was audible. And uh, <laughs> no, that's 100% on me. Of course I know the Waco kid from Blazing Saddles. Mm -hmm. It was one of those deals where first question right out of the gate, the blinding lights, my brain just went, nope, I'm not going to give you this piece of information that you clearly know any other time. Uh, going forward, you have a little bit of confidence now under your belt, your first Schmodown appearance. Who would you like to face? If, if it's not somebody that's in the competition right now that you right. don't know, somebody that you might want to call out. Right. Um, you know, there are so many worthy competitors out there, um, but if Kevin Smith ever wanted to come on here and throw down, I'd be happy to. Silent Bob, not so silent. Now, Sam, you got horror in there, and one of the questions was about Insidious, and you answered right away. Did you forget about multiple choice, or did you think that if you if you answered without multiple choice, that Hal might not know? Right. Uh, I, I At first, I'd forgotten about it, but then I remembered uh, when I heard the rules before, I thought if it were a question like that, that and I really had no idea 
that my best bet was to just uh, venture a guess because mathematically speaking, once I get multiple choice and then I either, if I really have no idea, I'm just guessing at a one out of four shot. Uh, and if I get it wrong, then my opponent has a distinct advantage guessing out of a one out of three shot. Sure. And I figure either he knows it or he doesn't. And uh, and I, I, I guess to correct me there, I suppose. He is a master of mathematics and also movie trivia. You guys can find him on Twitter, at Sam Levine, and the co-host of Kevin Pollock's chat show, Sam Levine. Big victory. Congrats, man. Awesome. Now, Hal, I know I'm a big fan of yours. How do, how do you feel right now? What's, what's, your, what's your feeling overall? Shit the bed. When you shit the bed, you got to throw out the sheets. And, and Sometimes you, you got to throw out the bed. I don't Why think... Steam cleaner. Hal, you make me giggle all the time. I was, I was watching with pride. I, what, what was the toughest question you thought uh, of, the, of the whole schmo down today? Oh, that Dennis Quaid question uh, the, about a night... A, um, a, not a major 1987 film. I'll say it. Yeah. Was the, I, it. I bet it wasn't in the top 10 grossing films of 1987. Not a major film. Too obscure. That Dennis Quaid question. Oh, just a, 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 a real F you from Christian and Mark. If you're, other than that, other than that, they're beautiful, and uh, you know, it's fine. If you're following us on Twitter, uh, hashtag it uh, Schmodown. Let us know if it was in the top ten grossing movies of 1987. How uh, when you when you miss what well, what movies were going through your head in that final question, knowing if you got it right, we'd had to push Sam Levine to the limit. You were a 63 percent uh, favorite in this match by the fans on Twitter. What other movies were you thinking of that weren't you 571 and your answer K19 The Widowmaker? Yeah, I mean both have numbers in them. Uh, yeah, I was um, Doc. Boot, um, Hunt for Red October, also submarine movies, um, a submarine sandwich that I had had earlier in the day, you know, eat fresh. Uh, now, <laughs> now you, you may have lost to Sam Levine, who we all thought was sort of buzzsaw, but you really did. You went in there freaking fighters. You were throwing punches, throwing punches. Speaking of throwing punches, who would you like to see next? Who would you like to call out in the Schmodown? You're now in the challenger bracket. You just lost to first Piston Honda in Mike Tyson's punch out. You got to go back and fought Von Kaiser. Who do you want in the next round of the Schmodown? Let's bring on movie Mance. You want Scott Mance. I want Mance. It's all about the Mance. And it's all about Hal Rudnick. You guys can follow him on Twitter at Hal Rudnick. You can see him on the Screen Junkie Show. Hal, thanks for being a part, man. I look forward to seeing you again, buddy. Oh, my kooks. Schmodown. Here we go, Collider. We'll see you guys next week. Back to Christian and Mark. All right, Mark, that's it. Great words from both the winner, Sam Levine, and the unfortunate loser, Hal Rudnick. I don't think this will be the last we see of Hal. No, absolutely not. He adjudicated himself and the entire Screen Junkies crew well, and Sam Levine, he was an unknown quantity going into this matchup. He's not unknown anymore. He's on everybody's radar all the way to the top of the movie trivia showdown. This is the question, the title picture. Who's going to be wind up playing against Riley? We know Riley has his big matchup against JTE. Will Sam Levine be in that title picture eventually who's gonna be there what's gonna happen for you guys to find out keep the hashtag going schmodown what'd you think of this match who do you want to see next keep it coming who should sam levine play next out of all the people you've seen so far who should he play that's christian harloff my name is mark ellis for everybody here at collider video thank you guys for checking out the movie trivia schmodown we'll be back with a brand new matchup next week Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.